yummy. Who is thirsty? Can I offer you a, a cocktail? All right, so Will is just uh, cleaning out our water bladders. Uh, we opened them up and they were nasty. Lots of mildew. So one actually, the fitting had failed, so it started leaking. So I dug into it a little bit more for investigations and found out it was pretty nasty. All right, so Will has started the onerous task of disinfecting, getting the nasty mildew out of there. He's loving it. <laughs> All right, wanna pick up that end and show our viewers what lives underneath these 1985 never been touched water bladders. Yuck. And then like even the underside of the bag. Now can you do me a favor and pour me a little bit of water there? I'm gonna get some nice clean drinking water here. Here we go. Oh yeah. The water bladders were so gross, I wanted to conduct an experiment, so I brought them home and rinsed them out in the tub. A good lesson to clean your water tanks, people. On the third rinse, I even found some mystery plastic that came out. Okay, so just getting into uh, some more light replacement. So this guy here, uh, his original install, it's almost got like a little transformer in there in a fluorescent tube. You can see how low that light output is. See these caps come off. The diffuser slides out. Yeah. All right, got the last screw installed. So that's where we're gonna mount this bad boy, terminate it onto that existing block, and then just a couple little small countersunk screws just to attach the plate to the liner. Here's a finished one with the new plate. So that's nice and solid, nice and bright, got two-tone. So this is probably gonna be Will's little berth in here. Rear corner berth. Light level. That's pretty lame. No back plate required, so it was pretty quick. Much brighter. And still have two level. But that should bounce quite a bit of light around in here. So this crow just scared the snot out of me. Just working away here, and we have this nice skylight over the companionway that slides up. And the freaking crow just dive bombs it with a oyster shell, trying to break it open to eat it. And now they're over there on the neighbor's spreaders. I wonder if they have the bird <coughs> to come back and try to eat it. Now I have these old, uh, they're probably incandescent little exterior lights. So I got some color change LEDs. Dude, gross. Um, so they look to be about the same size. And they uh, toggle between red, green, and blue, I believe it is. Oh! It's pretty bright out here right now, but you can't really tell. And then you can just cycle them through. You have blue. Red. That'd be good too for uh, night vision. If you remember sailing at night. And green. Maybe for St. Patty's Day. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what are we up to today? Well, while cleaning the boat the other day, getting it ready for Easter sailing, um, we took the cushions out and was cleaning everything. And under further inspection on the bottom, on a couple locations, it is pretty rough and gross. I would hazard to guess this may be original foam from 85 and probably original fabric. So. We have watched a lot of YouTube on how to get the sewing machine out and do the templates and measuring and add your own zippers and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to take a stab at do it yourself. So step one, uh, go to the foam shop. And what's step two? 
take out your credit card. <laughs> yeah, and that will wrap up uh, this boat project. That is pretty You bad. wrecked it! What? You wrecked it! Oh my gosh, there's no chance. I'm sleeping on this. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> so nice. Whoa. So here I am installing a USB outlet, switch, and battery monitor for some ribbon lighting in the V-Birth. Okay, so we're going to get into unboxing to see uh, what it's going to take to get this bad boy installed. And with the new radio uh, having AIS, apparently uh, I can link this with the AIS VHF radio and this will actually transpond AIS ships onto the display as well. So uh, let's see what's in the box. Looks like my Navionics, there's the unit itself, more instructions, manuals, bracket for the transducer, transducer and cable, mount, power cable, fasteners, fuse, Decals, decals, quick reference guide, parlez-vous français, and a box. So now uh, start looking at logistics about getting this installed, where to run all the cables, where to deliver the transducer. Um, we wanted to have it um, in a flat spot in the hole pointing straight down, not on an angle so it gives you accurate measurements, especially in shallow water. And uh, it was recommended if you can't put it forward to the keel, that gives you a bit of a heads up if uh, it's getting shallower. Rather than telling you what you hit, maybe avoid hitting it if you're going slow enough. Okay, so to get the plotter mounted around here, I have to get the cables up through the tube here on the binnacle. That's the best way I could figure to do this. I'm going to open it up to make sure that there's not too many gears or chains or uh, wire open there that could. Uh, hang up on the cables and destroy them, or seize the steering, which would be equally as scary. But I figured maybe uh, I can cut a hole down here a little bit, and then uh, just free air the cables into the back. I'm gonna put a plastic panel here, mount the plotter facing up this way, so you can see it from the helm nice and easy. So I wanna get this compass off, which does need a polish as well. It's all sun damaged and you can barely see through the fog. And hopefully I can take the top off here, look down, and then from below, fish the cables up through. So that is the plan currently. Okay, so we're down in the rear quarter berth. Just by Wheels Abode. So this is the base of the binnacle with the cable steering. So there is a, looks to be a 3 8 hole there. I'm going to enlarge big enough to fish through the cables for the chart plotter. So that's some pretty thick metal, but it looks to be aluminum. So with some step up bits, I'm hoping I can make quick work of it. So a little bit of eye protection on, uh, and we'll try blasting a hole through there. Well, we did it, got through. So now we can start fishing the cables from the top side, or I guess send a fish down from the top side to capture the cables from below. Yeah, start fishing some cables. So the plan is to put the new 3-in-1 transducer next to the existing transducer. That must be a good spot in the hull, I would have to assume. Yeah, so we're going to fish through there along the engine compartment. 
pop out the back side where there's some panels in Will's berth and then fish it up in that little bulkhead that is placed beneath the binnacle. Up the binnacle shaft and then up through the top where I have destroyed the compass inadvertently. And here was the test location to make sure the transducer would read through the hull. Okay, so we got this cut out, the bottom cut out. Uh, just used a bit of the scrap that was uh, cut out to make a little filler for that inlet. We will line that guy in there, epoxy it to the hull, let that cure up, and then fill it full of Vaseline and sink Mr. Slug back in there. Okay, so I have epoxied in this uh, conduit fitting that will be the enclosure for the transducer. So got uh, two applications of epoxy on there, it's still curing. And then on the outside I backed it up with some silicone. So we'll let that set up a little bit further, do a tidy up, and then I will uh, put the petroleum jelly back in there. Um, take Mr. Slug, drop him back in there, do a flash up the transducer, and uh, see if we have winner winner chicken dinner. Okay, so we have Mr. Slug in his little enclosure. So we got that under control. Next step, I'm gonna just start putting some of the floorboards back, just cause it's getting a little bit tricky just to work in here. And we don't need uh, first mate Peg coming back to the boat. Um, she should be here shortly and having a bit of a panic attack because I pulled the boat apart. All right. So we able to push the wires up through. So the plan is to put a hole here, bring the cables out, put a new compass on or even a flat plate, and then I'll have the nylon plate here for a backrest for the chart plotter and the chart plotter will sit, something like that. Swabbing the deck? I am. How's it going? It's so fun. Pretty exciting if you're out on the water. Oh, back to work. So now having the AIS integrated with the chart plotter, we would be able to select larger boats and get information on them. This setup will also allow us to integrate other NMEA devices into the plotter. Well, good morning. Uh, today we are going to get into trying to repair or remedy the Hood 915 uh, roller furler. When we bought the boat we knew this was going to be an issue. Um, I'm hoping that we can just do some service to it and uh, we won't have to do a full replace. So let's get into it. So these two pieces here should spin freely with each other. So Murphy's Law went into 
try to get an allen key into there to loosen off the bottom portion of the drum and didn't have the right size so just had to run up to home hardware now we have metric and standard sets fingers crossed we can crack this thing open and see what's inside trying to separate these two portions. Oh well, we have some more dock lines now. Gross. Nasty. Okay, back down here at the boat to work a little bit more on this furling system. Okay, so lots of progress. Inside here was just caked with salt, like thick, thick salt. So I was able to scrape most of that out. It took me pipe wrenches and hammers to get this off and now. Easy breezy. So I'm just gonna hit it now with a little spritz of black paint on the inside just to uh, hopefully avoid any future corrosion. And then I'm going to attempt to use some JB weld on that crack to seal that up and start reassembly. So we got lucky on this one. I started cleaning it up. I got some penetrating fluid in there. And it furls. Yay, time to go sailing. Time to go sailing. We so, could be out on the water today. It is oh, so really warm. Nice out here today. Yeah, I can't believe we it. We got a couple little gusts, but yeah, that goes like nothing. I guess it just must have been seized. There was an enormous amount of salt in there. So I'm gonna look into uh, what's the best product to use in there to keep all the nastiness out. And um, yeah, but I thought I was gonna have to pull it all apart to see if the bushings or the bearings were uh, disintegrated, but it seems to move really freely. Like that's just with my finger. You get a line on that and put a little bit of weight into it and that thing will spin like a top. Yeah, very excited. Yay. Good job, Matt. Winning. Hashtag winning, and now we're gonna take our lines home. Yes, clean um, them up. We got a good tip, pro tip from the Harbor Chandler that um, don't spend a whole bunch of money on expensive boat wash. Just use detergent with uh, butt loads of fabric softener. Put it in a bag or pillowcase in the uh, machine so the agitator doesn't wreck the ropes or the lines. And um, yeah, I noticed this is taking a battle, battle hit. The ankle, an anchor bridle. Oh well. What do you do? Okay, got the JB weld on there. And then just some El Cheapo zip tie clamping system. And then let it set up for the rest of the afternoon. Fingers crossed. got the boat we got it home and now we are knee-deep in all sorts of different boat projects we found quite a few surprises we didn't account for um, kind of probably a little green going in and thought maybe this would be a turnkey boat um, it's in really good shape but I think it had been neglected for at least a couple years so we found a couple surprises a couple things we knew about um, that took a little bit longer and took a little bit more money than anticipated but that's how she goes so as the weather gets better we're really excited to get out and you know do some sailing and, and get to know the boat a little bit better 
and you need to go out there and operate the boat and run it through its paces to get to know all the little idiosyncrasies and how this works and that works and this mystery switch and this doodad and valve. But the weather's been kind of the pits. Um, so it's the Easter long weekend now. We had hopes of uh, going to a small island not far from here and spending a couple days there, but there's just no way. We're not ready. And Peg's eager and, and she wants to get going and I have to kind of pump the brakes. Just uh, the sobering voice of reason, so to speak, just to make sure that we are prepared and there's no surprises and we don't get out there and, and uh, struggle because that will not be great, especially on their first trip. So as a responsible captain, I want to make sure things go smoothly, especially for the first trip. So the water tanks are still on order. Um, we got a brand new Rockna 15 anchor, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm going to pick up some 100 feet of new chain as well. I want to get out there and do some sailing. Enjoy the boat. You know, we made quite the lifestyle change so we could afford to have a boat of this size. And I'm just a, really eager to get out there and enjoy it. We're just here at the dock so, and we follow Breaking Waves and their boat Kiana is here. So we're just going to drop off a little goodbye present. Just leave it right there. <laughs> Happy Easter weekend. Uh, we're just down at the boat. Uh, we were going to take out our new kayaks that we picked up at Canadian Tire. Unfortunately, we were not able to get out on the water this weekend. <laughs> Um, and then we thought we would go out kayaking today, but it's pretty windy out here. Not so good for kayaking. I can probably hear that. And we're thinking maybe we might take the dinghy out, but I'm just waiting for Matt to come back. What don't you know? <laughs> I'm not sure about taking the dinghy out. Oh yeah, Will wants to take the dinghy out. Yeah, Deckhead and Will is absolutely we're taking the dinghy out. <laughs> it's the only thing we could do to get them off Minecraft this morning. But it is yeah, a little bit blustery out there. We got friends just around the corner over there. And we will be in the lee of the wind on that in that bay there. Sure. <laughs> Can I sell you a bridge? <laughs> I'm gonna push you off. Bye bye. And we ran over to Newcastle to visit some friends and we got out in the dinghy, which was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the dinghy and the motor Worked performed well. fine. I know, this is the first Easter weekend we spent at home. Like, we always went camping and then last year we were able to get out to see us. Yeah, and the weather was COVID, really nice. And it looked beautiful, and so. I really wanted to be out this weekend, but it didn't work out. And I guess, I think as it goes with boats, there's always projects that have to be done. So we have no beds at the moment. and No water tanks? No water tanks. So. Or the only big thing left is the solar. Yeah. And then we're good. Like I'd want to have that all set up before we head to Before the big trip. Oh, right. And how about that? And how about that? Yeah, so in July, we plan on going to Desolation Sound on a big trip mm -hmm. so pretty much just everything now is prepping for that mm -hmm. yep. yeah yeah 100% can't wait stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> you have a mustache <laughs> when did you get a mustache YouTube does he have a mustache anyone see the mustache there well thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video hit like Subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you.